As a San Francisco local, I'm excited the weather showed out for everybody that came here today. And I have to, to give a full credit to the conference location. I, I don't think I've ever been to a better location at a conference, ever. Yeah. So I am the executive director of Cloud Foundry Foundation. And for those of you that aren't familiar with Cloud Foundry or why I'm here, we are the leading open source platform as a service. Our essential vision is to make a platform the best, and actually make the best platform for developers. And so there's a really tight integration between offering developers the best way to develop applications, but then pairing that with the best in-memory database, right? Today I'm going to talk a little bit about cloud native, and I think that's where we're all going. We're thinking about where is the future going, what does cloud native mean to each of us, and then how is it changing the world around us? But first, I want to tell a little story. Have you ever made a choice that changed your life? Went on a trip that opened your mind? Maybe took a new job, maybe at Redis, that launched your career? I recently made a choice that changed my life recently. I switched to a new bank. Okay, maybe that wasn't life-changing, but I decided to, they're not all the same. I recently moved to a, a new digitally native bank. Didn't have a brick and mortar, was cloud native from day one. It was clean, it was simple, it was easy to use. It put me in control. Control of how I spent my time, how much time effort it took. I mean, I hate to go to the bank, so this changed my world. And if you're a traditional bank, customers like me scare you because I'm moving to a new technology focused institution. I'm no longer wedded to a brand or a location. In fact, cloud is taking over everything. We've spent the entire morning looking at how. Platforms like Redis are fundamentally changing the approach to data and to the breadth and the, and the aggregation of that data. Today, everything is in the cloud. Banks are in the cloud. Retail is in the cloud. Hell, even pizza delivery is in the cloud. But what comes along with that are organizations that are cobbling together a variety of solutions vendors, technologies, and it's becoming a, a big mess, and it's becoming madness for technologists that are delivering this work. And so when I talk about cloud native, what does that mean to me? Cloud native, when I used to describe it, I thought a lot about 12-factor apps. Is anyone here not familiar with 12factorapp.net? the manifesto, the idea of creating stateless applications, for those of you that don't know, the idea of creating applications that can run in the cloud. And so we talk a lot, particularly the last year, about cloud-native architectures, cloud-native application architectures, cloud-native architectures, the ability to write applications that can run at scale in the cloud. Uh, more often than not, lately, we're calling them microservices, small, tiny little applications and or even serverless. But these are applications that can fundamentally take advantage of the breadth and the capability of cloud. In fact, more and more enterprise organizations are taking advantage of that. There's projected a 100% increase in the development of cloud native applications in the next two years. So it isn't a matter of what out there is out there right now, but as you look to the future, it's technologies like the ones we're developing that are going to make that possible and make that possible at scale. In fact, recently, JPMC announced that it was, opening, it was moving to a digital-first solution for everything that it does. And we're seeing more companies saying digital-first or, you know, I'm no longer a bank, I'm a software company, or I'm no longer a retail, I'm a software company. And so that really plays a role into everything that we're all collectively doing, both with the technology that enables this, 
but also even more importantly, open source. So if you're a technologist, your world has gotten really big. You're being asked a lot. If you're a CIO, you're tasked with shaping the future of your company. You no longer can afford to be a cost center. You now need to drive revenue. If you're an operator, you're architecting your company's future. You're building the platform that's going to allow it to scale and take advantage of those new innovations. And finally, if you're a developer, you're tasked with building your future. You're creating, you're making what your company will be in the future. Those applications you're writing are fundamentally changing your organizations. But imagine what we can do together. One of the things I'm really passionate about is open source. Open source allows us to bring together a broad spectrum of ideas, capabilities, perspectives, and technologies to solve really hard problems. And so I view what we're all doing collectively with open source as the potential to fundamentally change the world. So I run Cloud Foundry Foundation. Cloud Foundry is an open source platform as a service. Again, our task is to really allow applications to get out the door as quickly as possible at scale to drive and enable those innovations. But when I think about what Cloud Foundry is, it isn't much different than other cloud native technologies. In fact, I was comparing these notes last week with some other open source cloud native technologies because we all fundamentally had the same vision. Our goal is to drive velocity, enable applications to get out the door faster, and scale. But also enable innovation, because once you get an app out the door, aren't you iterating on that? Network continuous delivery, continuous integration comes into play. You're iterating in those ideas over and over again. So building in that feedback loop, that's where the innovation comes in. But finally, interoperability. Building those connective tissues to other technologies and services, because that's what actually extends a platform or a technology and makes it relevant and makes it useful. Industries across the world are changing, one of which is automotive. When I look at the work that Volkswagen's been doing, particularly with the automotive industry changing so quickly, it's amazing. Car companies are no longer making a car that gets you from A to B. They're mobile connected devices. The amount of data that's pulled from the sensors in a car in a single day is phenomenal and is only growing as more of these technologies are being used. For Volkswagen, they wanted to become a software company. They needed to compete against these huge changes in the automotive industry. And they had additional problems. They had no software developers. And they needed to make this change across 12 different brands. So it wasn't just a simple one shop that focuses on one solution, but they needed to be able to scale. They built out a team in the last two years. They now have 100 developers that are working full time on developing cloud native applications. They're now able to do this across 12 different brands. And most importantly, they have flexibility because their vision of the future is running on multiple clouds. So today they're running on multiple clouds with a combination of different solutions that allow them to take advantage of on-prem or public clouds as they need to, as their applications call for it. Or one of my coolest favorite stories right now is the US Air Force. How many people in this room think of them as innovative? Yeah, oh, one person, good job. Well, they are. I mean, but imagine all the data they're collecting from intelligence and data gathering. Um, what are they doing with that data? In fact, one of their big challenges was 
that they had a massive budget, but 70% of that budget was going to just keeping the lights on. 70%. So only 30% is allocated towards new applications and new ideas. That's not very much money to really spend on how do I move into the future. And oh, by the way, their development process took so long that by the time applications got out the door and into production, they were obsolete. So they didn't feel like they were able to compete and leverage software in any meaningful way. So two years ago, they implemented Agile Teams. They took advantage of a platform like Cloud Foundry, but started adding on services and capabilities to that and pulling in additional technologies. Now they're moving all of their applications and databases to the cloud. They actually were able to flip their budget allocation so that 70% is now going towards new applications, with only 30% really maintaining their existing infrastructure. And oh, by the way, they saved $600 million in the process. And are able to get applications out the door and enough to iterate them in a couple of months and changing the way they think about software. So I feel like if the government can do it, anybody can, right? And my final story is uh, really one of my favorites. Retail is hard right now. If you're in retail, the industry has changed so much. Home Depot is literally a brick and mortar that sells brick and mortar. That's their job. But they're now competing against Amazon to sell hammers. And if you're in retail, that's really frightening because you're now competing against a company that's been in the cloud for years. In fact, that's their focus. So what do you do? Home Depot, over the last two years, has built out a team of over 2,500 cloud-native developers. It's a team of people that are working and developing new ways of bringing the customer experience to wherever they are, whether if it's in the store or it's online, but pulling those experiences together. With over 2,000 applications now in production in the cloud, they've been able to decrease their deployment times from six weeks to 15 minutes. That's right, Home Depot deploys code to production every single day. So when you think about a Home Depot, that's not the first thing that comes to mind. But it's been phenomenal to see how these technologies that we're all collectively working on, cloud native enablement, what the real life implications are of those. It is not only changing the way people work, but it's changing the way businesses deliver value. In fact, with Cloud Foundry, we're seeing more than half the Fortune 500 are shaping their futures of their companies on this platform. And so if you're wondering about the capabilities here with Redis, obviously, it's there. It's the Fortune 500, it's the Global 2000 that are building the future of their companies on cloud-native technologies. But why am I here today at Redis Conf? Why am I here? One of the things that are really important for a platform is its extension of services. What it can connect to, what it runs on, what it runs alongside, and what runs inside of it. So we've invested a lot in CPIs, cloud provider interfaces, how we connect to any infrastructure. Service brokers, how we bind services to application and just really create value and extend that value to applications because applications aren't valuable if they're not connected to a backing service, like messaging, database, APM. We've spent a lot over the last two years working hard on interoperability, pulling in external technologies and capabilities, particularly from open source. You know, with Istio and Envoy and CNI and an open container initiative, we're seeing an, a lot of momentum in cloud native technologies. And I think Redis brings a powerful story to that, is the, you know, the main backing engine of all of these solutions. And so I think about the potential of Redis and the breadth of users that are using Cloud Foundry and Redis to deliver value. The combination is what's changing the future. But more importantly, it's what's bringing that cloud-native 
reality to organizations around the world that are trying to compete. But at the end of the day, we're an open source foundation. With a collection of over 63 members and growing, our goal is to really bring as many of you into the community as possible to continue to innovate and make the best ideas possible. We are one of the highest velocity open source projects right now with over 3,200, we're nearly 3,200 contributors across 40 projects. We're continuing to grow. And so my ask for you in the audience is to be part of that, to contribute, give us feedback on how we can improve our platform and bring the best of breed experience much like Redis does to your customers and your users collectively. So feel free to contribute, submit a pull request, give us feedback. It's important because that's how it drives and that's what powers us as an open source collective. But I want to end on, ultimately we all want control. We all want to be in charge of what we do, when we do it, and how we do it. And right now, where we are in the industry today, cloud native is powering the future for each and every one of us and it's at our fingertips, and the opportunity is up to us. So thank you. <laughs>